I looked at this thing the other day and it reminded me. In the HVAC industry, oftentimes we use plugs like this with a female uh, plug on it to power our stuff off of equipment on a roof, vacuum pumps and so on. But most of these things were flat dangerous. They were just like this, except they had the female plug in them, and they were not really very safe to use. And this one's got a little plug on it, it's kind of a mess, you know, eh, dangerous. Um, and it's got alligator clips right there. Well, I thought I should make one that's safe. We in the HVAC business don't always have access to 120 volt outlets. But we almost always have access to equipment on the roof. Uh, in some places it's required by code that the 20, 120 volt outlet be uh, installed, but that's grandfathered in a lot of places. So I'm going to make one that should be used. Now I use this one, I use some others that were just an extension cord that I cut off and put alligator clips on and the like. But let's make one that's good, one that we all should have. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay, ground fault interrupter, it's just the empty box right now. I've already taken it out and we got a cover, kind of a cool uh, stainless steel one. And we got a box. I've already put the uh, ground fault interrupter in there. I'm going to hook up the alligator clips and everything that I would normally have in this. So maybe I will have a safe power source. Now I have this thing done. All I've done is taken the wire and I've used a stress reliever, stuck it in here, wired it up, the ground, the white, and the hot. And I've got these three alligator clips. Black one for hot, white one for neutral, and bare one for ground. Now, most of the time, when we have to hook up power like this, it's because we don't have 120 volts. And many 240 volt circuits do not have a neutral. So that may sound like you can't do this, at least not safely, but you can. So I'm going to show you how this hooks up into a little sub panel I got here. And you can see how it'll work, and I'm going to test it. Now, I've got the power cut off here, but you, you should also note there is power here. So probably your best bet on this is to shut the power off at the panel. That's not always an option. I'm sorry, guys. We'd love that to be an option, but it isn't always a good option. So I'm going to hook this up, and hopefully I can keep these two wires away from the hot lead. And it is blanked off, so I'm going to go down here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the white wire. I'm going to hook up the white wire to the same place. Okay, they're both on the bare ground. Now, with this off, I'm going to hook up the hot to one of the leads. Okay, it's hooked up now. Now, you may not be able to see this too well, but this little light has to be on. I'm going to turn on the power. You probably saw that thing kind of blink bright. Now, it's on, so this thing's working. It's all wonderful. Okay? So I'm going to plug something into this. Now, here's what I plugged in. Now, this thing doesn't turn because it's, it's damaged. But it hasn't kicked the breaker. You can hear it hum. So let's try a little trick. Okay, listen close. Okay, you hear it kick off? So this is my little ground fault interrupted 
I'll call it a power takeoff. Okay? It's safe. It's not waterproof, by the way. Of course, if it did get underwater, the stupid thing would kick itself off. So, you know, you're to a certain extent, you're trusting this thing, but compared to what I was doing with something like this, it's actually pretty good. A lot less dangerous. Anyway, a little safety thing that you can use. Probably not for everyone if you don't have some kind of experience in this. Uh, in wiring up electrical, I don't know that I'd do it. I purposely have not shown exactly how to wire it because if you don't know enough about wiring to actually wire in a switch, I don't think it's a good idea for you to do this at all. Anyway, uh, that's it, my power takeoff with a ground fault interrupter.